Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Empire Metals Limited Investor Presentation. Throughout this presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged. It could be submitted any time via the Q&A tab situated in the right-hand corner of your screen. Simply click on Q&A, type in your question, and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question received during the meeting itself. However, the company review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it's appropriate to do so. These will be available via your Investor Meet Company dashboard, and we'll notify you once they're ready for your review. I'd also like to remind you that this presentation is being recorded. Before we begin, we would like to submit a poll, and this will appear on your screen momentarily. I would now like to hand you over to Mike Struthers, Non-Executive Director, Sean Bunn, Managing Director, and Greg Kinzel, Finance Director of Empire Minerals Limited. Good morning. Morning, Paul. Thanks, and morning, everybody. Um, I'll kick off the proceedings here um, to welcome to Empire Metals presentation. Um, for those of you who are new to the story, uh, just a little bit of background on the company first. Um, Empire Metals formerly was Georgian Mining Corporation. Um, that company was formed back in 2015 uh, on the basis of a joint venture in Georgia with a, with a local explorer with a large land package over there. It was about just over 1% of the country. Um, and it was a very prospective copper gold region. But um, cut a long story short, you know, it was a, we had a challenging period over there. We had a lot of interference in the company's sort of uh, plans and exploration permits and what have you. So finally, we, um, we divested out of, out of Georgia. Um, you might have seen a recent announcement where we, um, we sold our interest there in the joint venture, withdrew, and back in August 2020, we picked up uh, the first of our series of projects in Australia, um, which we'll be talking to, to now. And so we've changed the focus of the company, really, from, from Georgia into new jurisdictions and, and of course, mining-friendly Australia. So a very good address for us. Um, so what we're going to do is, is talk about those assets and the company's plans uh, going forwards. And if I can click the slides, the usual disclaimer, please read. OK, so an overview then. Empire Metals, we're an aim-listed exploration resource development company. Uh, the LSE ticker is triple E. Um, Really, the strategy is develop a series of, of a pipeline of projects um, at different stages in development. Uh, we are exploration and resource development focused. Um, we have the capacity, as we'll see when we talk about the team, to take things through to production. Um, the current focus is the, uh, the high-grade Eclipse Gold project. This is about 55 kilometers north east of Cal, Kalgoorlie, the famous mining town in Australia, Western Australia. And the Eclipse project's got the potential for some short-term uh, open pit production, which we're which we're working on at the moment. Um, I'll be saying a bit more about that later. We've also got the option, which we announced recently, to acquire a 75% stake in a project called Central Menzies, uh, another excellent address. Um, and this is the second project in, in a, a strategy of ours to really build a, a significant presence in the Western Australian or the broader Australian gold mining sector. Um, I'll be talking now to, to the management team. Um, you can see here we've essentially uh, a very experienced team. Everybody says that, but of course we believe it's uh, we believe we have a particularly good team. Um, Neil uh, Neil O'Brien is the non-executive chairman of the company. Um, he's ex Lundin Mining. He had a, a long career with Lundin. Um, he's had a very successful career in exploration and new project, new business development. Um, he's on a board, number of boards of both private and public companies. Um, Sean, well, we're very pleased that Sean's just recently joined us as MD. Um, Sean came over to us uh, from Hummingbird, London company, um, as their SVP projects. And Hummingbird had a, a, have a number of gold projects in, in West Africa. Before that, Sean worked in a variety of commodities and, and uh, jurisdictions. But actually joining us is something of a homecoming because Sean's now uh, Perth-based and, and gone back to his roots because he came out of Kalgoorlie School of Mines and worked in the, the Western Australian gold fields uh, and the early stages of Korea. So he's happy to, to have come home again. Um, 
And myself, I'm also uh, ex London Mining, um, but I had a very technical career initially in operations, Africa and Australia, and then moved into consulting and uh, a lot of work on studies and capital projects, the likes of that. Um, Greg and Peter uh, both have, have strong financial and corporate backgrounds uh, in the mining sector, both either on boards or involved in supporting companies on LSE, AIM, TSX, TSXV, etc. So a very, a very, a very credible team. Um, the only thing I would point out on this, this standard sort of capital uh, structure slide really is the you know, the, in terms of share price, the company's in a, a much better position now than we were 12 months ago, and we've got a really good foundation now for for building off these these uh, interests that we have in, in Western Australia. So um, looking forward to seeing that share price graphic go in the right direction. Um, so I wanted, I'm going to now talk about the Eclipse Gold project in Australia. Um, in terms of the address, it's a great address. Um, we're uh, within sh within shot of, let's say, about 55k or so uh, north of Kalgoorlie, um, but the uh, the surrounding region has got some very famous uh, gold operations such as Canala Bell, Paddington, Kundana, Golden Mile, etc. So a very good address. We we acquired um, we acquired the Eclipse project as I mentioned back in August of 2020. Um, it's a high grade uh, mining license. Um, we've got an option to acquire the additional 25% uh, at, a, at a timing of our choosing. Um, so look, a very good address. Um, uh, the Western Australian industry has been has been buzzing uh, in the last 12 to 18 months or so. Um, and it's also been operating in something of a COVID bubble. So although the, the borders, uh, the interstate borders in Australia have been closed, um, Western Australia itself uh, has been uh, very active uh, and the mining industry here is literally, as I say, buzzing. It presents some challenges for us in securing drill rigs and geologists and the like, but we've been actually successful in doing so. And uh, and so, yeah, operations are are running with you know with COVID uh, uh, restrictions, but they're running fairly normally, uh, and we've been able to run our activities on the ground there also uh, without much interference or, or delay. Those things are under our control, I should say, because you know one of the challenges we face is is uh, assays and 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 the like. But uh, we'll come to that. So. Um, yeah, high-grade mining license. Uh, it's been held by a, a local prospector, Romel de la Costa, for, for something like 30 years. Um, it did originally produce back in the early 1900s, uh, something about 1,000 tonnes, about 25 grams per tonne gold. So high-grade. Um, there are It is nuggety, and I'll, as I'll come to, but you can see an example there of some of the nuggets that were found uh, within the license area. Um, we've... Uh, we've with our work has demonstrated that the um, the mineralized uh, system at Eclipse is actually different to what it was thought of previously. It isn't just a single vein, uh, as I'll show in a moment. Um, it's actually a, a complex system of veins, sort of sub-parallel veins, which uh, um, contain the gold mineralization. Um, the vein widths vary from sort of one to two meters or so, but some intersections have been significantly wider. The region is um, it's a good address again from a from a treatment point of view. It's likely that the Eclipse project is not going to be large enough to, to you know to justify um, a, a standalone processing facility. But as is common practice in in that part of Australia, um, you know we have toll treatment options available to us in the region, um, and uh, you know we we've started considering some of those. Um, there is also an opportunity uh, to, in terms of permitting for a project like Eclipse, which is going to be, you know, it's going to be relatively small scale if it, if it is indeed, uh, does indeed become a pit. There's a small scale mining permit scenario available under the Western Australian regulations, which um, you still have to do certain qualifying studies, but it does uh, shorten the time frame within which you, you can open an operation. So. You know, we, we're doing the appropriate studies there in uh, in the lead up to you know in parallel with our technical studies on the on the viability of a of a pit operation at at Eclipse. 
during our initial work programs, we also did some uh, quite detailed geophysics over the footprint as a whole. And there are a couple of other targets further along to the along strike to the northwest uh, called Houdini and Easy uh, prospects, which uh, we've done a little work on, but but they still remain to be um, to be tested fully. So um, this is an illustration on the right there of uh, the the vein systems around the old eclipse shaft. You can see that in the close to the center of the view. So our work, is, as I said, has shown that the rather than being a single vein, the eclipse vein, this system is actually a series of parallel or subparallel veins which uh, come together around the eclipse shaft and presumably then will separate again further along strike. And you can see over on the left side there what an area which has also got some old workings um, called Jack's Dream. Now, um, Jack's Dream, the intersection there is it, it showed us that we had a, a quite a different style of mineralization. Um, around the eclipse vein, uh, eclipse shaft, we have, as I said, a single, more or less a single vein and gold mineralization uh, within parts of that vein. What we see at uh, Jack's Dream, though, is, is what we call stockwork style mineralization. So um, uh, a cluster of very uh, closely spaced small veins, but with some, you know, all of them carrying some gold tenors. So we ended up with an intersection there and one drill hole of 24 meters at 1.4 grams. Um, and that included, uh, I think, 11 meters at about 2.3. So a very interesting intersection on that side. And our, our recent work program, um, our, what we've called our phase three work program, has, um, has included a lot of drilling around that area and also testing the connection between the eclipse shaft area and Jack's dream. So it'll be very interesting to see what we get for that. We are uh, we are waiting on the assays for that drilling program. Um, so that'll be very interesting. Uh, and that, you know, it'll be interesting to see the, the scale of what we might have at Jack's dream and whether or not that connects to eclipse shaft. And if it does, what are the implications for any uh, any potential pit operation. Um, and you can see the last bullet there. We've done just over 8,500 meters of drilling so far and just over 100 holes. So a fair bit of work done already um, and, and more to come. Um, this, the table on the left there just illustrates some of the, uh, some of the better intercepts that we've had in that drilling program. This is all cut at above five, five grams a ton. Uh, and you can see the grade, uh, there's some spectacular grades in there. Um, they vary a lot. And that's an illustration of what we call the nugget effect. So fundamentally, there are gold nuggets present within the veins. And it's a matter of, uh, of, of luck and, and sampling density as to whether you hit a, vein, uh, hit a nugget in, in one of those drill holes. Um, we also don't really see, a, as, as is common with these types of deposits, we don't see a trend of grade with depth. Um, in fact, the old the old timers mined uh, stopes at Eclipse Shaft right up at surface, and they were chasing you know high grades. Um, but you can see that the, the the work we've done so far has extended down to about 130 meters. Um, and on the illustration there, you can see it's open in a number of directions. Um, we're focused at the moment on the upper levels, but uh, you know there is scope at depth, and you also can see on the on the left there that same intercept over at uh, at the Jack Stream old workings, which we're as I said we're we're waiting on further assays for that area. Um, the uh, the work program that we've been following, um, as I said, we call it Phase Three. We, uh, we issued a press release on a, a non-compliant resource, an initial sort of maiden resource for that area around, around the eclipse shaft, um, 92,000 tons at 2.2 grams. Um, that was limited to the eclipse shaft area where we've done most of the historical, uh, most of our historical work. Um, in order to make that compliant and in order for us to be able to uh, advance our, you know, our understanding of the, of the eclipse shaft area and the potential for an open pit, there are a number of other things that we're doing. Um, 
We've done some geotechnical logging of diamond drill holes to give us some slope design criteria. We've got a, a, a suite of metallurgical test work under, uh, underway. Um, we're waiting on the results for, for both of those and they will feed into, as I say, a compliant resource, but, but also importantly, open pit studies. Um, we've done aerial topo, that's completed. Uh, we've done some baseline studies for environmental work as well, which is also completed. So really uh, where we stand at the moment with, uh, with the Eclipse is waiting on the assay result for, uh, for all of the drilling we did in the last phase, but particularly over by uh, in the area of Jack Stream. And the receipt of reports on, on these various things, particularly the MET test, I think, which will uh, you know, allow us to understand recoveries. Um, initial indications that we've got from that uh, are, are very positive. But you know, we need to see the final complete set of information once we receive the report. Um, so that's essentially our, our, our situation with Eclipse. One of the interesting features that we've uh, we've found in our work is that um, the sum, this, the distribution of mineralization in the upper levels in in what is the oxidized zone at Eclipse is is variable. Um, the the historical miners, as I said, mined uh, high-grade stopes right up to surface, um, and also, but also in some of our work, we see we see areas of the uh, in the in the oxidized zone where the gold seems to have been remobilized uh, down at you know back down to depth. So we're currently studying that. It has an effect on on open pit scenarios. So we're we're looking at at that further. Um, and looking forward to getting the assay results from from this recent phase of drilling. So yeah, news flow coming. We'll we'll obviously once we receive those results, we'll we'll publish the results and uh, and be able to take our take our next steps for you know towards the uh, assessment of an open pit potential. Um, so news flow from Eclipse follows. Um, and I think on that note, I pass over to Sean. Uh, Sean's going to talk to the Central Menzies project. Yes, thanks, Mike, and uh, and good morning. The uh, the focus here on Central Menzies, uh, you know, Mike talked briefly about the you know the importance of having uh, the good location, a good real estate. So Menzies to us is is the next. Um, obvious target to uh, to get an exploration program on good ground. Uh, it's different geology, a host geology to what we see at Eclipse. Menzies, uh, the gold fields around Menzies sit on what is the traditional greenstone granite uh, belt that, uh, that extends right through the gold fields and to the north and further to the south uh, as, as you uh, as you look at the uh, as the map of WA, so what we're interested in here is the uh, what they call the Menzies shear. It is a uh, a fault line that's running uh, down through the town of Menzies. Menzies is an old mining town, uh, as many of these uh, these towns sprung up, you know, a couple of hundred years ago as the uh, the prospectors moved through these regions. So. Uh, it's not a great surprise to find townships on the middle of a gold mining area. Uh, there's been over uh, a million ounces of gold identified along this strike. Uh, it's the 10 or 15 k's to the north of us. And uh, we think this is another area that has been uh, underexplored. Uh, it's similar to the deal that we've done with, uh, with the Eclipse, uh, the same prospector. Uh, Mel Della Costa, we'll, we'll, we, we've negotiated. We'll talk a little bit more about the structure of that deal further uh, in the presentation. The other interesting thing here is that uh, some of our uh, peers uh, in uh, in the exploring junior explorer field, King West, uh, has uh, recently announced uh, a resource, uh, jaw compliant resources that contain over 300,000 ounces. Their licenses, uh, you know, envelope uh, the, uh, the Central Menzies project tenements that we've picked up. And there's also been recent news flow coming from a company called Energy and Resources that have, uh, that have been announcing the potential to develop uh, small scale mining 
slightly to the east, northeast of us. Uh, so we're very excited by this particular acquisition. Uh, one of the other highlights, I think, to, to, to point out here is that of the 1.1 million ounces that have been pulled from this region, uh, 640,000 ounces uh, came out at a grade of 22.5 grams a tonne. So uh, this is not a, a, a small high grade deposit with a large uh, halo effect of lower grade. Uh, th this is a genuine high grade vein system that we think uh, should extend uh, down through the, uh, th through the shear. And we certainly expect to, uh, to find an extension on our property. To further support that logic, uh, we could run through some of the highlights that we've put out recently. The, uh, the, the, the area that we're talking about is directly uh, along the Goldfields Highway. It's uh, 110 or so kilometres north of Kalgoorlie and uh, very close again to uh, toll treatment plants that we can access both in this occasion uh, down south to Kalgoorlie, but we could also uh, toll treat to the north. Uh, there's a, a couple of uh, uh, plants that are operating up there that will take toll treatment. So we've got multiple options here at Menzies. The, uh, as I mentioned, this, uh, the, the tenements uh, straddle the Menzies shear and this sits within the, this classic granite greenstone belt that is, uh, that extends uh, for hundreds and hundreds of kilometres up and down the western side of, uh, of this uh, what we call the eastern gold fields, but it, it's basically the the main structure that runs up and down that side of uh, of WA. Uh, we've uh, recently uh, put out an announcement where we showed the uh, some drilling. We'll get to that, but there's also been a surface exploration uh, on the tenements. The one immediately uh, to the west of where we we've got old workings has yielded uh, twenty. Uh, 20 ounces in uh, in near surface uh, clearing and and uh, you know prospecting. So we're very excited by the quality and the uh, the prospectivity of these uh, of this region. Uh, we announced today some historical drilling that we uh, our, the owner of the uh, the tenement had completed. Uh, over these, uh, his tenure there, and uh, some of the best intercepts are reported uh, here. We've got uh, for highlights, uh, you know, five meters at just under 20 grams per ton within 30 meters of surface. There's uh, other intercepts quite, quite uh, encouraging, three meters at five, two meters at, at five and a half. So this is quite a, uh, a different, as I said, different type of uh, target for us at, than we see at Eclipse. The, uh, the vein system here uh, looks to be slightly more substantial and certainly we're getting uh, very good grade intercepts near surface. So this could, uh, this could give us a, uh, you know, a near, another near um, term cash flow option uh, as we move forward with our with our exploration program, I'll just move on uh, to the next comments. So what we're doing here at, at the Menzies is is effectively a repeat of the process that we applied at Eclipse. So we're currently building a a database uh, built around the historical workings. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, reports that we've accessed through the uh, the West Australian mining uh, exploration registers. So we have access to historical data. We have access to some geochemical data in the area. Most importantly, however, uh, we've been able to purchase uh, airborne geophysics uh, data from uh, from our neighbour, Kings West, uh, who've uh, as I said, are operating just to the north and uh, east of us. So what's been encouraging is that they flew a, a, a survey back in the last quarter of uh, 2019, so it's very recent. We've been able to uh, purchase that data and we're in the process now of, uh, of putting together 
uh, a geophysics survey which will enable us to pinpoint uh, any of the fault lines and uh, structures that sit across our license. We are about to uh, undertake surface geochemistry soil sampling. Uh, we've, uh, we're designing a, uh, a grid across those tenements at the moment. We would like to be able to kick that into play. Quite possibly we can, we can commence that in uh, very early July, so within a couple of weeks. And uh, that would give us uh, a, a further targets to add to our planned drilling program. We've recently, in the last week or so, uh, completed air, uh, an aerial drone survey. So we've picked up all the old workings. Uh, there are substantial um, workings from previous prospecting and from previous artisanal type mining from, uh, from the early days. So we're, we're able to pinpoint all those and start to put a, a, a geological database together that allows us to focus our drilling campaign and we would intend to do a substantial campaign here at Menzies uh, within the next couple of months so that we uh, we're able to move forward on a decision about the option that we've acquired. Just to touch upon that, the terms of the option agreement, we have a, a nine month option agreement. So we basically have kicked that away at the end of May. So a decision on that, uh, on these tenements would be uh, due very early next year in February. Uh, the option is to acquire 75% uh, of the uh, of the tenements. We also would have a trail to pick up the other 25% if we uh, decided to do so at the future. So it, it gives us control and ownership. We've uh, paid out uh, $350,000 to acquire the option. 250000 of that was in cash. We, uh, we've we also agreed to spend upwards of uh, 500,000 Australian dollars within that nine month period. So uh, that would easily cover the exploration program that we've set ourselves, uh, the drilling and the, uh, the geophysics, et cetera. And uh, yeah, we look forward at this stage to uh, being able to make a decision on this particular uh, project uh, with, well within the uh, within the nine month period that we've set ourselves. And I'll just uh, on that note uh, hand over to Greg uh, who is uh, I think going to give us a quick summary of uh, where we stand with the project in Austria. Okay thanks Sean and good morning to everyone. Um, as, as some of you may know, the company has some legacy projects, uh, three main license areas in Austria. Uh, whilst up until 2020, there has been no work undertaken um, on these licenses as a result of the very low carry cost. Um, I think it's, it's in the vicinity of a few thousand euros a year. Uh, it costs us to keep these licenses. Uh, we've just had them sitting there um, just sitting in the background. Uh, late last year, the company was actually approached by uh, a party interested in potentially acquiring these, these licenses. We did a very small program up in Altenburg, one of the areas we did a, a rock chip sampling program where we collected 58 samples. Uh, and just under half had grades between four and a half to 31 grams a tonne gold. Um, we're not intending on uh, completing any additional work there ourselves. Uh, the work we undertook last year allowed us to renew uh, the main license portion for another five years. Um, but interestingly, in the last few months, we have actually been approached by a couple of other companies who are interested in acquiring these projects. Um, so we're, we're pursuing those at the moment. Um, One's a, an AIM listed company, one's an ASX listed company, and then we have a, uh, a private group who are acquiring small gold mining projects across Central and Western Europe at the moment. So um, we'll continue to, to progress that. Um, as I said, there's been, been very minimal carry costs. So hopefully we can look at uh, monetizing these assets sometimes in the near future. Okay, um, 
I'll give Sean and Mike a, a breather for a sec and I might just do the uh, the investment summary as well. So look, as 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 Mike and Sean have, have I guess, clearly sort of run through today, uh, the company has two very clear focuses now. Uh, the Eclipse Gold Project, uh, which really was a, was a starter for the company. I mean, it was a foothold in a new jurisdiction. Uh, the same commodity, uh, but but given the trials and tribulations we experienced in Georgia, uh, getting getting something in a in a safer, uh, more secure jurisdiction was was obviously a uh, a priority for the company. I mean, interestingly, we had been discussing Central Menzies with Mel Della Costa back when we entered into the Eclipse option, and uh, having having that target of growing a, a, a bigger pipeline of projects. Uh, it, was, it was really about getting the Eclipse deal done, making sure the parties all got on well together and, uh, and worked well together. And then Central Menzies opened up to us. So we've got a really good pipeline now between the, the small scale production potential at Eclipse, plus the expansion at Jack Dream, Jack's Dream. And then of course, uh, earlier stage, but with the potential for a significant discovery at Central Menzies. So in summary, uh, Eclipse is offering us the potential for short-term cash flow, um, but I'll caveat that by, again, reiterating that it's not just about the, the work around the, um, the existing mining operations, the shaft that Eclipse, we have Jack's dream and we have the potential for further extensions there. Uh, having just completed the sale of the Georgian assets, which... Um, uh, was a was a long and drawn out end to a long and drawn out period in Georgia. Uh, we managed to achieve what we feel was a very good result, um, given where we'd gotten to, uh, selling the assets for three point three million in cash. And as we announced recently, that's left the company with circa three point one million pounds uh, in cash. So we're very well funded for the work programs at Eclipse and Central Menzies. And uh, to exercise the central Menzies option if we decide to move ahead uh, with that one. And I guess to, to, to follow on from that, um, there's, there's excellent scope to continue to, to grow the company. Uh, we're, we're very focused on Eclipse and central Menzies, uh, but given the jurisdiction, given the opportunities uh, that, that may present themselves, uh, and there are significant opportunities. I mean, there, there are a number of new discoveries that have been made just in the last couple of years. And it's one of the most exciting things about this West Australian region. It offers the company a very, very safe jurisdiction uh, area to work in, particularly these days where travel's restricted. Um, we've got all of the, the experience and knowledge with consultants and contractors albeit the time timelines are sometimes stretched a little, um, as we've seen at the moment with the, the assays. Uh, but it is a, it's a tremendous opportunity. It's a fantastic jurisdiction. Uh, having Sean join us recently is a, is a real positive. And I know he's looking forward to, to uh, getting back to his roots in Kalgoorlie and uh, helping us grow a significant company. And I think that is it. So, Thank That's you very great. much. And um, I think we'll move over to the questions. Greg, thank you very much indeed. Sean, Mike as well. Thank you very much indeed for updating investors there. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please do continue to submit your questions using the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. But just while the team take a few moments to review those investor questions submitted already, I'd like to remind you the recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A, can be accessed via your investor dashboard on the Investor Meet Company platform. I'd also like to remind you that your feedback is important to the company and immediately after the presentation has ended, you'll be redirected for the opportunity to provide your feedback in order that the company can better understand your views and expectations. Um, guys, we, we did receive a number of pre-submitted questions from investors and perhaps I can start off the Q&A session um, with these. I think the first one um, addressed to you actually, Greg. Um, can you explain what the acquisition process for Central Menders is likely to be and what the spending slash payment terms are? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, we uh, we paid three hundred fifty thousand dollars to enter into Australian dollars to enter into the option, two fifty in cash and a hundred in stock. Uh, exchange rate at the moment is about one dollar eighty two to the pound, so it's 
yeah, just a, a little over um, a little over half. Yeah. Uh, we have nine months on that option, um, and as I think Sean pointed out, we've got work underway and expect to have drilling underway in the next couple of months. So we don't have any issues with that nine month option period. We've agreed to spend half a million uh, Australian dollars again within that period. Uh, we had a similar similar structure with Eclipse. We were required to spend $300,000 during the option period. I think by the end of it, we'd spent sort of five, 600. Um, so it's a, it's a low bar. And, um, you know, assuming there's no major, major issues at the start, I, I expect we'd, uh, we'd probably spend in excess of that. So, and then to exercise uh, $1.3 million in total. So that's around 1.6 million pounds. Uh, just over half in cash, $1.75 million in cash, uh, $1.25 million Australian dollars to be um, uh, settled via the issue of uh, shares in the company at a small discount of 30-day volume weighted average price at the time of the exercise. So hopefully, um, hopefully that's clear. That's great, Greg. Thank you very much indeed. Um, next one, I think, is for you, Sean. Um, now that Georgia has been divested, does this mean that Empire is only going to look at assets in Western Australia? And a two-part question, are you looking for additional assets now? And if so, would you consider commodities outside gold? Uh, well, I think our focus has to be in the next, you know, obviously in the near term, to bring a, a, a Eclipse option, whether we can bring that into a small-scale mine quickly, and advance the option at Menzies, that, that's our focus. However, uh, the longer term strategy, certainly I would be looking to extend, uh, you know, to me, uh, you know, the Australian uh, mining industry is, is, is significantly greater than the Eastern gold fields. And uh, I know uh, a lot of good discoveries are now being made in, um, in less traditional target areas, uh, certainly in the Northern Territories, there's been a couple of big finds recently. Um, so my view would be we should, uh, you know, concentrate our technical base here in Western Australia, use our uh, our, our expertise, access to uh, skilled uh, mining people. Uh, however, I don't think, uh, you know, a two or three hour flight to the north or to the east should prevent us from um, from acquiring, uh, you know, quality assets uh, without, you know, within the Australian uh, continent. So, you know, yeah, I, I think we look further afield as we build the uh, portfolio. That's great, Sean. Thank you. And the next one's actually for you. Is how much time uh, is Sean expected to be on site at Eclipse and Central Mendes? So if you, if you could answer that, it'd be great. Oh, certainly. I've, I've made a visit. I've made one visit so far. I intend to be able to get up there on a, on a you know, obviously a regular basis. It's a, it's only an hour's flight. Um, so I would imagine I would be, uh, certainly when we have drilling activities, exploration field work, I'll be up there. But I would imagine, you know, every couple of months I'll be, uh, I'll be making a visit. So six, seven times a year probably. That's great. Thanks, Sean. Um, uh, and again, the next one actually for you. Um, I've heard that operators in the area say that in-situ gold is valued at a premium in the region due to the infrastructure of majors operating in the area looking for potential M&A targets. Do you think this is true? Uh, it, well, the, a premium. It, it, it's There's certainly competitive tension here in this part of the world at the moment. The, the mining industry here has largely been, uh, you know, not been disrupted by the, the pandemic. Uh, the Australian um, uh, fortress, if you like, has meant that we've had reasonably free travel within the, uh, within the country. And within Western Australia, we, we see the mining industry, the fly in, fly out uh, activity is, is just booming. And so uh, that's putting pressure, I think, on uh, you know, acquisition of uh, these types of uh, exploration targets. And when you uh, acquire one, uh, if you are successful, it's certainly uh, there are a, a, a lot of uh, uh, bidders coming to the table to, uh, you know, to, to, to add to their portfolios. You know, the small fish eats, you know, gets eaten by the bigger fish. So, um, yeah, there's certainly uh, price pressure due to competition. 
That's great, Sean. The final one for you um, is, when do you expect results from the expansion drilling at Jack's Dream? Well, that's imminent. Uh, I think Mike flagged that we were, you know, uh, steadily advancing the uh, the work program at Eclipse. We've completed the last drilling program some weeks ago, and the uh, the assaying system here at the moment is it's got quite a long backlog. Uh, however, we are we are in the uh, we are in the system. I believe the uh, the final assays would have gone through last week, and we're just waiting for the QAQC data. So. Uh, yeah, once we've had all that and we've able to update the uh, the database and the models, we'll uh, uh, you know we'll have an, we'll have another uh, news release. That's brilliant, thank you. And the final pre-submitted question, can I address this to you, Mike? Um, what do you as the board believe to be the share price catalyst over the next three to six months? Well, I suppose we've touched on that, you know, really, in the sense that you know, it's it's really about news flow, and and uh, you know we'll be generating more news flow as as uh, as Sean was just explaining, you know, with our next round of results at uh, at Eclipse, um, and the ongoing other work at Eclipse, you know, like the metallurgical test work, uh, etc. So, generating news flow there, um, continuing with news flow there, I should say. Um, I suppose a milestone at Eclipse is, you know, is understanding then once we have a we have a, a jaw compliant resource and we'll do our pit optimization assessments, uh, you know, once all the necessary input data is is in, and we've, I think, importantly understood what the intersections at Jack Stream mean for us, um, whether the area is actually an interconnection between them and the other area at Eclipse shaft or not. Um, and our and our uh, other studies looking at this uh, near surface mineralization that I uh, mentioned briefly. So um, yeah, ongoing work at Eclipse, and obviously the you know with a high grade, very prospective uh, uh, prospect like uh, at Central Menzies, um, getting our work program moving there. Um, we expect, you know, uh, once we've done our preparatory work and done some good drill targeting, then we would expect some. Uh, some good results from that drilling, so uh, generating news flow from from central Menzies as well. So um, that's really going to be our focus over the next few uh, few weeks uh, and months. We've got obviously work to do on the central Menzies to make a decision on the option. Um, we'd hope to be able to do that, you know, before the option period. Um, but some some of these some of these factors, like assay results, are are um, you know are, are outside of our control, but. We're planning a, a, a concentrated single drill program there to give us all the information we need rather than two or three rounds like we did at Eclipse because uh, that will be more efficient in terms of dealing with some of these delays outside of our control. Um, so yeah, uh, that's essentially it, I think. Focus on these two projects. Obviously, there are, you know, being opportunistic, there will be other assets that may come across the table that we should consider. But focus right now is, you know, is on these two assets. Uh, generate some real value from from both of them uh, and see where that leads for us. Mike, thank you very much indeed. Um, that concludes the pre-submitted question. Investors have obviously submitted um, questions throughout today's live event. Mike, if I may, could I just ask you just to click on Q&A and you'll, you'll see uh, those mm. questions there. If you could, um, where appropriate to do so, please just read out the question, either answer it or distribute it amongst the team. Um, that'd be fantastic. Thank you. Oh, sure. yes. Well, we've got one here um, from uh, Julian C., uh, which I'll take. Um, Julian asks, is the style of mineralization of Eclipse likely to host some large gold nuggets? Well, um, the, the answer to that is, is, is clearly yes. I mean, one of our slides shows some gold nuggets that were uh, that were found by by the owner, uh, Mel Dalla Costa, um, within the license area. Um, and, uh, you know, and we've explained, I suppose, the the nuggety nature of the mineralization, meaning that these veins do contain nuggets and it's a, a matter of good fortune or whatever, that, whether your drill hole hits them or not. So in the process of developing a resource, you know, we take these things into account. We, we top cut the resource. We, we take away the highest grade so as not to introduce too much bias. But, uh, you know, you are taking into account that nugget effect when you generate a, a resource model. So, so the short answer is yes, indeed, we do. Um, there's, if I just go scroll through the list, there's one here from, from Paul, Paul W. 
Uh, good morning. I'm glad to see you're looking to sell on the Austrian prospects. Um, is there a sign of any interested buyers yet? Um, Greg, would you like to? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, as I as I mentioned, we've we've actually got three um, parties who we are talking to at the moment. Um, so yes, there there are interested interested buyers. All of them have existing operations within that central. Western European area, uh, so we are we are progressing them at the moment. Um, there's quite a significant database of, of information, um, as I'm sure you can imagine, given you know the operations there, were, there was mining there back in the 1800s. So combined with various exploration programs over the last century or so, there's a lot of data to go through. But uh, yeah, we are we are moving forward and. Um, Look, hope hope to be in a position to provide the market with an update soon. Great, thanks. Um, there's another one here from Elias J. Um, do you feel the current market cap of 8.7 million sterling fairly reflects where the company is at? I suppose any one of us could take that one. Um, I, I, I would say for my part, um, no, I don't really think so. I, I think um, we're in a very good position now. I think, you know, having having changed the focus of the company away from the Georgia and the challenges we had there, and, and you know, it's been a long process to enable us to do that. Um, but now with these, with these assets, this foothold into the Australian industry, gold industry, and... Uh, you know the prospects, not just at the two projects we have, but being being very well funded, and uh, you know, and the very dynamic nature of the Australian mining industry at the moment, anyway, particularly in WA. Uh, I think we're in a we're in a very good position, and uh, you know, the, the the prospect for growth and uh, growth and adding value um, on these assets that we we currently hold is is very good. So uh, no, I don't I don't I think we're a little undervalued, but I don't know if either of Greg or Sean want to add anything to that. Um, no, no, I, I agree. Look, you know, given given our cash at bank at the moment, um, you know, just under half of the market cap is is cash. So it's 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 giving a very low enterprise value to to two very prospective um, projects. But uh, the market is is fickle for junior explorers in particular. So, uh, you know, we we continue to to try and pump out news and uh, and doing events like this, we hope we'll, we'll get the company and our new strategy back on investors' radars. Um, and, you know, a, a lot of it is about drumming up more interest in the company now. So um, with with continued news flow expected, hopefully we can, uh, we can rectify that. And let's just perhaps finally, there's one more here from Paul W. Um, I think he's referring to a comment that you made, Sean, about fish. Um, uh, I just now you talked about big fish, eat, big fish eating up little fish. Um, has Empire already had approaches from larger companies, even at this stage? Uh, well, I, given I raised that comment, um, hmm. no, I'm, I'm not aware of any approaches directly to uh, to the to the board. Uh, the comment, I guess, is is a reflection of what's happened here in the gold fields um, over the last, you know, probably last five or so years. Is uh, a lot a lot of smaller companies have merged or, or taken out um, others and, and and started to grow a substantial portfolio uh, of, of gold projects or producers. And uh, you know, you're seeing companies now worth over a billion dollars. Um, there's several examples, um, you know, Northern and uh, Evolution and others have just slowly, slowly uh, grown and and uh, combined uh, with the increasing gold price have seen substantial um, market, uh, you know, value. Uh, we're not in that position at the moment, but we would obviously like to start to grow the portfolio. And as we, as 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 I think, as Greg mentioned, uh, you know, with some exploration success, uh, certainly here in in Australia, the um, the market has been rewarding companies, uh, you know, quite handsomely for uh, 
for good news flow. And uh, you know, whilst our shareholder base clearly is is not um, entirely domiciled here in Australia, I think the um, I think we'll get the same reaction. I think people will see uh, expiration success news. Uh, you know, positive news coming out of uh, Empire will uh, hopefully translate to recognition of value. And perhaps, uh, perhaps finally, there's uh, there's a, a, a few questions relating to you know when are we going to generate cash flow or when's production going to start at Eclipse and this sort of thing. So I'll perhaps you know lump all of those together and, and tackle that. Um, as we've explained, I mean there's a there's a process to go through with these types of projects, and on Eclipse we're you know we're working through that process. We're fairly well advanced, but as we said, we're waiting for some critical sort of inputs to being able to to run you know pit op what are called pit optimization studies which is really a uh, you know wrapping a, a, a shell a pit shape around the, the resource model and <clears throat> and with a, a series of technical uh, constraints um, making a determination of the you know the scale and the viability the financial viability of, of an open pit so that work is in progress. Um, we're not going to put a time frame on it. We, you know, we need to let those uh, those studies complete. Uh, then we can look at some pit optimization, you know, studies uh, taking account of things like uh, what our draw results at Jack Stream tell us. Uh, is there a connection between Jack Stream and, and the Eclipse shaft area itself? Uh, what are we, you know, what are we learning from our, our investigations of the near surface mineralization in the oxide zone? Where it's present high grades in some areas and and not high grades in other areas, and so there's a number of things for us to sort of uh, just continue to study before we can understand, uh, you know, to make a determination of the viability of a pit. So the process to go through there, and uh, and that's what we're doing. There's no there's no no sense in jumping ahead or making guesses here. We have to follow the, the logical process, and then we'll be able to reach a conclusion. Um, I guess that's that's it. I think. In the interest Thank, yeah, I was going to say, Mike. I think you, yeah. you you pretty much covered off all those questions you can from investors. We are just approaching the hour mark as well, so thank mm. you very much indeed. Um, perhaps just as we before we redirect investors to give you some feedback, mm. and of course any further questions that come through, the company will be able to review and uh, respond where appropriate to do so, and those responses will be available on the Investor Meet Company platform. But perhaps, um, uh, Mike, Sean, perhaps we could ask just for a few closing words just to wrap up before we redirect investors to give you some feedback. Uh, so, sure. Um, yes. Um, well, I'll take it first. Uh, I, mean, I thank everybody for the session today. I hope it's been. Uh, I hope it's uh, told you something about uh, you know what what Empire Metals is about now. Um, having been through the uh, the frustrations of the last uh, three or four years um, with with Greg and our and our other colleagues on the board. It's a it's a real pleasure to to now you know have had some had success in in uh, in, in divesting ourselves out of those frustrations in Georgia and, and truly transforming the future of the company into a you know a gold focus in in, in the Australian industry. Um, we are in a much stronger position than we were a, a year or eighteen months ago, and it's you know it's really exciting to see now we've got a foothold into Australia and. Uh, you know, I think we'll continue to see a lot of growth there, not just at the assets that we have already, but others will come across our, our table as well. And we're in a very good position to, to grow now and develop that presence in WA, so, well, in Australia generally. So that's what I would say. Sean, do you want to add anything? Yes, yeah, certainly. I, uh, so I'm very pleased to have had the opportunity to uh, to present today. It's obviously uh, just joined the company and, and only really been in the chair for a couple of weeks. Uh, but I've, you know, I'm, I'm, I was attracted to uh, to this particular opportunity because of the upside potential I see. Uh, you know, we we do have a very strong board. I think it's a, a fantastic uh, testament to Mike and, and Greg that they've been able to, uh, you know, extract a a deal that gets us um, out of the Georgian uh, situation and, and allows us to go forward with considerable funds in the bank. So. Uh, I think we've got a, a, a big upside here in, in uh, initially in the eastern gold fields of Western Australia. But I, as I said, I think we've got to start looking for a, a bigger, uh, you know, a bigger targets within the entire continent or even 
you know the uh, the Australasian sort of uh, region. So I think we uh, we're well placed. Uh, uh, you know we're well financed, and I think uh, we should have a a pretty good uh, news flow coming out of the company over the next six to twelve months. So uh, I look forward to other calls such as this one and and continuing the story. Thank you. That's fantastic, Sean. Thank you very much, Sean, Mike. Greg, thank you very much indeed for updating investors today. Could I please ask investors not to close the session as you'll be automatically redirected for the opportunity to provide your feedback in order that the management can better understand your views and expectations. It's only take a few moments for you to review and it'd be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Empire Metals Limited, that concludes today's session. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you. Thanks.